The Israeli government deported the head of Human Rights Watch's Israel and Palestine office, Omar Shakir, on Monday. The organization said the move places Israel in an ugly club of authoritarian regimes. Israel has accused Shakir of supporting the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement a nonviolent global campaign aiming to pressure Israel over the, its treatment of Palestinians. The Israeli Supreme Court essentially interpreted the 2017 law that you mentioned earlier that instructs the Interior Ministry to deny entry to boycott supporters to apply to rudimentary basic human rights advocacy. The Supreme Court, in essence, said that if you challenge the legality of Israel's settlements, which is a war crime under international law, which has been established over many decades, you, in essence, are attacking the legitimacy of the state of Israel, and as a result, you are harming um, Israel, um, posing a threat to the country, and that the state is legitimate to deny you entry and therefore deport you. So not only is Israel, which calls itself a democracy, um, deporting a human rights defender based on their peaceful advocacy, but actually they're even going a step further and acknowledging that they're, you know, doing it with the court's stamp of approval over human rights work based on international norms. Human Rights Watch has never taken a position on BDS. Um, what we rather do is call on businesses, as we do across the world, to respect human rights. And decades of research has led us to conclude that businesses which operate in the illegal settlements invariably contribute to that illegality and to rights abuse, and we've asked for them to stop doing that which is, of course, different than a, a more general boycott call or even a boycott call specific to those companies or to Israel proper, which we've never done. This decision um, is coming amid a context in which there is a systematic assault on human rights organizations. And there's a reason why the Israeli government is doing this. They are trying to silence the messenger instead of dealing with the core human rights issues um, that, that are taking place on the ground. Um, but the reality is that um, these efforts are failing. Um, these efforts have only shined a light on the very issues that Israel is trying to, uh, to cover up. Um, but of course, what's happening to me um, must be noted is small compared to what Palestinians face. In addition, to Leith's travel ban that you mentioned. You know, in recent months, we've seen um, Aldemir, a Palestinian prisoner rights organization, have their army, have their, uh, their office raided uh, by the army. We've seen a field researcher with Beit Salem who was detained while doing field work. And of course, if this is the way that human rights organizations are being dealt with, think about the millions of Palestinians in year 53 of an ugly occupation, which they regularly face excessive use of force, um, home demolitions, movement or restrictions that are discriminatory, not to mention not having the most basic civil and political rights. A 50-year-old Palestinian today in the West Bank has never had the right to free expression, the right to free assembly, the right to free association. They've been living under a brutal military rule that the Israeli government wants the world to forget about, but we won't forget about it.